A little vanilla. Heather, Scottish Heather. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Luning, Horst Luning, and I'm the master taste of whiskey.com. Today I have an a important bottle here on my cask. It's the most often sold Scotch whiskey in the US and the fifth most often sold Scotch whiskey in the world. Well, the US is a big, big market for whiskey in the world. This is Dewar's White Label, 40% ABV. And uh, this bottle calls itself uh, the metal whiskey, the metal scotch in glass over here. And three metals are shown. Uh, Paris 1889, London 1888 or 83, 88, and Edinburgh 1886. Gold medals, uh, well, you have to go to exhibitions to receive and then put your bottle in and then the jury says, well, this is a gold medal whiskey. And this whiskey collected over a hundred medals all over the world, all over the centuries. And uh, yours was established in 1846. And uh, it was John Dewar, mm, I think so. And he was a founding member of the uh, DCL, the Distillers Company Limited, which was the predecessor of Diageo, which is today the biggest alcoholic beverages company in the world and the biggest whiskey producer in the world. And uh, so this is one of the founding stones of the Scottish whiskey industry worldwide. And uh, today it's no longer in the possession of Diageo. Uh, they had to sell it. Uh, the, the watchdog said, well, you have to de-invest some brands because they are uh, too big in the market. And then they said, well, we sell it and they put it on offer uh, or auction and Bacardi uh, got the deal. Uh, and now they are shipping cases of Bacardi rum and Dewar's uh, white label Scotch whiskey into every bar in the world, especially in the US. So there are some synergies uh, <clears throat> to, well, to count your money on, money on. Ah, and I read about a thousand, a uh, hundred medals, and here's a gold prize, 500 medals. By appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. So they have a royal warrant. But I'm not quite sure if uh, this whiskey received the Royal Varand for the, the taste of the whiskey or <laughs> for its ability to add millions and millions, even billions to the foreign trade balance of the United Kingdom. Um, here, John Dewar was his name, Perth, Scotland. Even for a mass market whiskey and a cheap one also, it has a three label design. One, two, three. This is expensive, but uh, the screw uh, cork, no pull on the top, shows it's, it's mass market. And there's a, a fourth label on the back. Award-winning, exceptionally smooth, handcrafted from up to 40 Scotland finest single malt and grain whiskies. <clears throat> up to, I don't like those words, up to. They could have, to have two in them. Two is all, so up to. <clears throat> um, the lead malt whisky in this blended whisky should be Aberfeldy. And I tasted already Aberfeldy, it's a wonderful whisky. There's a light, uh, smoky aroma in the Aberfeldy. It's a wonderful whiskey. And this one should give a K 
key component in the taste of this yours. And uh, you do not mix single malts in a blend, but malt whiskies in a blend. A distillery produces malt whiskey, and when it's bottled only from the distillery, then it's called a single malt. And if you mix it with up to 40 whiskies, then it can never be a single malt. So this is rubbish what's said here on the label. Finest single malt and grain whiskies. They take the praise from the single malts. Okay. Then they say this whiskey uh, stays in the taste forever. But um, over the centuries there have to be differences in taste. Production changes. The master blender who decided how many of how much of each whiskey is mixed together. They change. Generations pass away. So quality will not quality. Taste will change. Quality may stay the same. Well, and here I read Dewar's never varies. This number ensures traceability against forgery or imitation number. So they have a problem with imitation. Well, others have too. Um, this shows that this whiskey is liked by the world. And here's a plastic dispenser in the bottle. And this is not only for better pouring out the whiskey, but also for preventing to refill an empty bottle with fresh whiskey, cheap whiskey from the supermarket. Well, yours is not that cheap, but in developing countries, there are even cheaper whiskies on the market. Okay, I think you have to be a barkeeper to pour this whiskey perfectly. Coyote, ugly, honey, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, what do I expect? I expect the odor of Aberfeldy. I expect cheap grain whiskies filling up. I expect a colored whiskey because it's so, so huge in volume. Yeah, and probably the malt whiskey content may be not higher than 15, 20%. I don't know it exactly, but this is what typically is in those relatively uh, low price whiskies. I first tasted this whiskey in, in Spain in a hotel and I looked at the shelf and said, well, what to have? And I didn't know the juice then. I know the importance of the juice, but never tasted it. And I said, well, I take that. And he brought me a big, a huge glass. And then he poured and poured. I said, stop, stop, stop. And then I learned in Spain, they fill up the glass until you say stop. And you always pay the same price. So I got a full glass for eight euros <laughs> for the whole family. It's a light one. A little vanilla. Heather, Scottish heather. A little fruitiness. And not really smoky, no, not really. Perhaps a little bit honey, but it's not sweet enough for a distinct honey note. Yeah, it's quite light, but it's very pleasant.
and now the taste changes a lot. It moves over to a distinct bitterness. Uh, a little sweetness still there, but very few caramel. So I suggest that they have used re re reused casks for it. If you uh, this whiskey will be three years and a day old. Uh, the well, the trade statistics of the Scotch Whiskey Association show that an awful lot of whiskey is sold exactly with three years age. So this one, as one of the leading Scotch whiskies, uh, will also be only three years old, as all the competitors do. Um, <clears throat> and those casks will be used ten times not only first or second fill, uh, or th maximum third fill with the single malt whiskies, but here we have multiple used casks. And in the end, all the vanilla and caramel is gone out of the casks, even after the third or fourth filling. And then tannins are coming, and tannins means bitterness. The aftertaste, not too long, is already completely gone. Um, I'm afraid the taste is very, very good, and the, uh, the, the aroma is very, very good, and the taste is far less. Mm. It's not really good. Perhaps this strong oakiness will fit into mixed drinks, so that the, the, the whiskey part of the cocktail will show up clearly. Or in a whiskey coke. This will add definitely, beside the alcohol, an oaky character which shows up there as whiskey and not vodka in the coke. Yeah, so this was a must for me. I had to taste this whiskey because it's so important, but I'm afraid <laughs> this is not the whiskey I'm used to and I like to. It's a mass market whiskey, but important <laughs> for the foreign trade balance of the United Kingdom. Thank you for watching. There's more to come. Stay tuned and log up in the whiskey.com website, the whiskey database, if somebody has added comments to this bottle. Thank you.